Hello everyone. So what we are now going to do is a very interesting interpretation of the PG grading that we have discussed in detail. Okay, so this is basically what is called as continuous grading. So uh, let us understand some of the basic issues here. But before we proceed further, these are the source material uh, ASTM D6373 we have seen in detail, ASTM D6816 also we have seen in detail, ASTM D7643 is what we are going to see now and of course ASTM D7175. In fact, my sincere request to all the participant is if you are not able to get any of this ASTM standards, which I think are very, very important for understanding many portions of this uh, NPTEL course, kindly write to one of the course coordinator and we will be able to make it available to you because ASTM permits us to share resources for educational purpose. Okay. So let us uh, revise this super pave asphalt binder specification. This system is basically based on climate and in fact one very important thing that we need to really keep in our mind and this is something that you are going to experience as you go along. Just having a dynamic shear rheometer is not enough to say that we have arrived and so we have switched over to PG grading. That is not really true. Dynamic shear rheometer is an equipment in which you can make some measurements. Now, what those measurements are and how they really related to the country's loading environmental requirement, we need phenomenal data of the climate data. Okay. So, now this is the PG performance grade. So, this is 64 average. 7 day maximum pavement temperature and this is the minimum pavement temperature. So, we have seen all these things. Now, let us revisit ASTM 6373 little more in detail. So, what is that you see here? You see on the first column and in fact, if you recollect, I emphasized it. In viscosity grading, what you really see is the parameter on the temperature and the value on the right hand side. In performance grading, what we really do, we flip it. Okay, the parameter and the values are there and the temperature comes in the right hand side because the emphasis is on the temperature. Now, what it basically says, dynamic shear D7175 is the standard that we are going to use, G star by sin delta. Let me just use this opportunity to make it little more clear, it is actually the dynamic modulus or what is normally called by the practitioners as complex shear modulus. So, it is you have to write it with a two vertical bar. So, G star by sin delta minimum 1 kilo Pascal using a 25 mm plate with 1 mm gap at 10 radians per second and whatever is the test temperature. So, this is for the as you know for the unaged condition. What about short term aged condition? So, it is the same dynamic shear rheometer D7175 G star by sin delta, but here it is 2.2 kilo Pascal 25 mm plate 1 mm gap test temperature at 10 radians per second. This, this is RTFO aging or short term aged. What about long term aged? For long term aged, so that is aged due using a pressure aging vessel ASTM D7175. Here we use G star times sin delta. You are familiar with the derivation associated with it, you have already seen it. And now this is maximum 5000 kilopascal. Some standards in the world push it to 6000 kilo Pascal, but that is a minor point. And this is measured using 8 mm plate, 2 mm gap 
at 10 radians per second and this is the test temperature that is given. So, this is for unaged, short term aged and long term aged conditions. What about the low temperature? Now, what we do in the low temperature? We have a PAV aged material and of course, this is the first thing that you be and in the same PAV aged material for low temperature, we do two types of test. One is a creep stiffness that you do with a bending beam rheometer and it has two values. There is a S max value of 300 MPa and M value of minimum 0.3 at a tested temperature at 60 seconds loading conditions. Another test that you do is a direct tension test given by ASTM D 6723. The failure strain is minimum 1 percent and at a test temperature at 1 mm per minute is the displacement rate. So, this is another test. So, you can use one of this test to figure out your low temperature. Now, if you uh, watch carefully ASTM D 6373, there are two tables given. So, there is a table 1. There is also another table 2 that is given in which there is only one difference between table 1 and table 2 which is this one. What it says is, it tells you to find out the critical low cracking temperature using ASTM D6816 and that is given as the pass test temperature. So, here the test parameters are given and using this test parameters, you are expected to find out the cracking temperature and that is what is given here. So, table 2 uses ASTM D6816 for determining the critical low cracking temperature. Now, there is something very interesting you should very carefully note. In low temperature, if you take a look at the spec line that is given in the top, it is given as PG82 let us say minus 22. But when you actually come to the measurement temperature, you see that it is given as minus 12. So, what they do is for the pass file determination, what you do is you take either the direct tension test or the BBR test and it is rocked at a single temperature that is the low temperature grade plus 10 degree centigrade. So, which is the low temperature grade? This is the low temperature grade. So, we take this minus 22 degree centigrade and add 10 degree centigrade and this minus 12 degree centigrade is what is normally used here. Okay. You can think of it in a specific way of you know adjusting for the low temperature grade including the reliability and various other issues. I will not uh, get into the uh, details. If you need further information related to why is this 10 degree centigrade is added just in get in touch with me. I will explain to you by email or maybe you know if you can uh, have a video chat and I can get into the more details because it will get into lot of details that may not as of now relevant to everyone here. So, now if you take a DSR data, let us say you collect a DSR data mm -hmm. and uh, this is what you will get. Okay, I have the antenna for rheometer in our laboratory and so when I run this Astro software that is installed in this rheometer, so these are the details that you really get. Okay. So, if you read it carefully, grading test history, result 1, this sample passed at 82 degree centigrade with the G star by sin delta equal to 2.3972. Please note very carefully how they write here. It is G star. Okay. And the result 2 is this sample failed at 88 degree centigrade with the G star by sin delta equal to 1.4. Okay. 
So this is about obviously this is about 2.2 kilo Pascal. So the test results are given here 10 radians per second, strain is 10 percent, the mean shear stress is given here, the phase shift angle is given, mean complex shear modulus is given here, mean temperature lower plate and mean temperature sample is given here. So analysis of the test result is uh, the sample is found to fail at 88 degree centigrade and the pass fail temperature is given as 83 degree centigrade. So now what you really want to actually know is at 82 degree centigrade the G star by sin delta is 2.3972 kilo Pascal. At 88 degree centigrade it is 1.4093. Now if you are going to go by the grading, what you will do? You will be basically taking the 82 degree centigrade and you use. Why you use that? Because if you come and read here, what it says? It says minimum 2.2 kilo Pascal. So if it is minimum 2.2 kilo Pascal, you have 2.3972. Now the next temperature is 1 point, next temperature value is 1 point. 4093 so that is less than 2.2 kilo pascal so you want to use it so your grade that you will be using the super pair grade will be 82 degree centigrade but what is the actual temperature in which it was exactly 2.2 kilo pascal so we need to find that out now this lecture that you are hearing is only to find out the actual pass fail temperature okay not the super pair grading right super pave grading is 82 in, in fact as i have mentioned earlier these people did this grading for uh, 3 minutes uh, the 3 degree centigrade sorry so then only they shifted it to 6 degree centigrade so how did we find this as 83 degree centigrade we basically did some simple interpolation now what that interpolation and how to do it is what this lecture is all about so before that so let us introduce some definition so what is a continuous grade? A grade defined by the estimated upper and lower continuous grading temperatures. Now number 2, what is a continuous grading temperatures? The estimated temperatures at which the properties of an asphalt binder are equal to the specification requirements given in tables 1 or 2 of the specification 6373. So that means the continuous grading temperature in this example that we have seen is 83 degree centigrade that is the continuous grading temperature. Then what are these two test temperatures T1 and T2? Two PG grading temperatures one grade apart such that the measured properties at the two temperatures bracket the specification requirements for the property in question. So in fact in this case that you see there was one measurement that was made at 82, another measurement that was made at 88 degree centigrade and your PG value of 2.2 kilo Pascal was found somewhere in between. So this is the test temperatures T1 and T2 and more importantly you are going to see a parameter called delta Tc that is normally used in asphalt engineering. Okay, it is nothing but we go to the low temperature, there are S values, there is an M value. Okay, we know what is an S value, we know what is an M value. Now, what you are going to do is to find out the continuous determined by subtracting the continuous grading temperature for the M value from the continuous grading temperature for S value. So, this is a very critical parameter that is used for low temperature grading. It is nothing but the difference between the fail temperature at S uh, and the fail temperature at M that is delta Tc. Okay. Now how do we do this continuous grading? The continuous grading for high intermediate low temperature for original uh, and RTFO condition lower of the two continuous grading temperature. Okay, for PAV condition, intermediate continuous grade is equal to the intermediate actualized continuous grading temperature and for lower, so since you have two values, 
okay so higher on the continuous grading temperature that is what you are going to do so, see please understand one thing in the unaged and short term aging condition you are going to get two continuous grading temperature so which one to use use the lower one for pav condition you measure only one so that is the actual continuous grading temperature for lower temperature what you do you have two values one for s another for m whichever is the higher we use it for the lower continuous grading okay now here comes the formula that is used if you thought they were doing a linear interpolation it is not really a linear interpolation it is an interpolation that was done in the logarithmic scale so this is the continuous grading temperature tc we have seen in t1 is the bracketing temperature and t2 is the other bracketing temperature t1 and t2 that also we have seen ps is this specification requirement what you really need for the property in question and p1 is the test result for the property corresponding to t1 and p2 is the test result for the specification property corresponding to t2 okay so if you really want to now uh, write these values for the example that i have shown t1 t2 is 82 degree centigrade 82 88 degree centigrade p1 p2 and ps is nothing but 2.2 kilo pascal so let us quickly go take a look at the actual value so 2.1 point 2.39 and 1.4 point 2.39 kPa so this is the value that you are looking at and this is how you have to substitute and that is the way in which you got this as 83 degree centigrade so this is not a linear interpolation it is a slightly different now what about the low values uh, low temperature so there is a s value that is given in semi logarithmic scale it is the same thing t1 we know the meaning of t1 we know the meaning of ps we know the meaning of p1 t2 t1 p2 so this is what you need to do while you do it for uh, s value in the logarithmic scale semi logarithmic scale for m value you are going to do it in the arithmetic scale so i will show you one example problem here so whenever there is an x that is given here there is an insufficient information so what people did is to go and collect data so for a moment let us assume that we have a binder like this 82 minus 28 within bracket 31 so this is your intermediate temperature 82 is your high temperature minus 28 is the low temperature okay now the pg grade is given here we don't know how to do the continuous grading here so it is given as x x x x so delta tc is also not known so first we make this measurement at 82 degree centigrade and the corresponding value is 1.83 this is in the original unaged condition so what is your requirement your requirement is 1 kilo pascal then you have 88 degree centigrade you made and then you got a value of 0.9 now what is the highest passing temperature the highest passing temperature is obviously 82 degree centigrade so let me just zoom it so that you can actually see it and the continuous grading temperature now you are going to get is 87.2 how did you get this 87.2 you used to that formula there okay so no problem so we have found out the first value of the continuous grading temperature now we come to the second one which is the rtfo so here it is 2.2 and now we see that we have made one measurement at uh, Uh, 82 degree centigrade but we haven't done anything here so what we do is we go to the lab and we make one more measurement at 88 so whatever is missing here is so that is why 
you are you have written it here as xxx so we have 82 4.21 88 is 2.1 and the continuous grading temperature is now 87.6 how did you use that 87.6 because you interpolated it here what is the highest passing grade 82 degree centigrade now you have 87.6 and 87.2 which value will you use you will use the lowest value that is what we have discussed so that is how you get your 87.2 i hope it is clear now we go to the next example problem in the same thing so this is for intermediate temperature there is a typo here yes astm also can make a typo so this is g star times sin delta so this is 5000 kilopascal so they have measured it at 28 degree centigrade they got this value as 3920 is this enough no this is not enough so what you do is you make another measurement here 31 and 28 so what is the lowest passing temperature the lowest passing temperature is 31 and the continuous grading temperature is 29.3 okay so this is the actual temperature at which you are going to get exactly 5000 kilopascal right but what did we decide about what we will do so let us go back to that previous slide for intermediate continuous grade is equal to the intermediate continuous grading temperature so that is what actually we use so we will use the grading temperature here so i think i have made it clear also in the earlier lecture the intermediate temperature and the manner in which it is computed is still not very clear because the fatigue response of the material where it starts fatigue and where it starts stops rutting and where it starts fatigue is still to be explored so if some of you are really interested in research and this is something that you should focus on because for while for many material metals composites and many other material the creep fatigue interaction is very clearly studied whereas for bituminous material the creep fatigue interaction is not studied very well so that is why we make some assumptions that in the initial period of bituminous pavement life there is going to be considerable amount of rutting and during the later period there is going to be considerable amount of fatigue so it does not necessarily mean that your pavement will not crack in the initial period it will crack it will also flow after two years the only thing is we just make this assumption okay now coming back to this what you are going to do is though you got 29.3 as the continuous grading temperature you are not going to use it rather you are going to use 31 here in the grading but when we are going to write the continuous grading temperature we are going to write it as 29.3 i hope it is clear so this is 82 this is 28 and this is 31 within bracket but the actual value is only one value so that is 29.3 now let us come to the uh, lower temperature so there is there are two parameters here one is the s value and another is the m value here obviously here there is information missing so what we are going to do here is we are going to collect additional data so at minus 18 degree centigrade the s value is 163 and minus 24 degree centigrade the s value is 350 now what you should do is you need to find out the lowest passing temperature which is uh, minus 28 degree centigrade and the continuous grading temperature is going to be minus 32.8 so how did you get this you have to go use the formula but please don't get confused because at minus 18 you have 163 and minus 24 you have 350 you must be thinking so if the s value is going to be less than 300 so how come i am getting minus 32 because what you do is you are adding a 10 degree centigrade to that. that is what you are doing here 
and in the same way you can you you do this whole thing here minus 18 and you are getting something like minus 33.2 now i have minus 32.8 and minus 33.2 we take the lowest of it and that is what is given here so your actual grading now is 87.2 minus 32.8 and ideally i should write it within bracket as 29.3 degree centigrade so if you look at a literature data this is what you are going to see so let us take the case of one sample 66.4 minus 23.7 so the continuous pg is this much but the super pay pg will be 64 to minus 22 because you basically try to match it with the nearest pg interval i hope this is very clear thank you so much